Okay, so um, welcome along both of you to the Mission Possible Sofa. This is our hub for ED Live 2018, where some of uh, the kind of leading insights of the sustainability world can come, hopefully relax, hopefully the chair's comfortable, and just discuss some of the key topics that are, that are kind of in, in our industries and in our sectors. So, um, Adam Hall, Head of uh, Sustainability at Surfdome, uh, thank you very much for coming along, and it's my pleasure to introduce to you to Henry Allen, Head of Operations at A Plastic Planet. Um, so you're, you're both um, really impressive advocates for a, a really key topic, which is how do we get rid of that 8 million metric tonnes of plastic that are winding up in our oceans every year. Um, Adam, with Surfdome you've got a, a really impressive strategy that's I think eliminated 1.2 million uh, plastic bottles from operations in, in its first couple of years. And, and Henry, Plastic Planet has been a real kind of driver in meeting with businesses, organisations, uh, academics, um, educations, in really driving awareness of this resource problem that seemed to have uh, just been lurking uh, for, for years and all of a sudden come, come to the forefront big time in, in the last year or so. So I suppose um, to start off, you're going to be sitting in the solving the plastics problem session in about half an hour or so. So I suppose a nice big question is how, how do we solve it? Um, Adam, maybe you'd like to start with, uh, with your one key aspect that you think is once we get this bit nailed, we can then move on to start solving these problems. Yeah, I, I strongly believe that it, business is at the central of this, of actually being able to change very, very quickly. Businesses operate from quarter to quarter, so they can change within that quarter. And um, changing consumer patterns is, is the long game. Um, changing government legislation is, is also notoriously slow. But if we can change as a business in that very same quarter, very, very quickly, we can influence our customers and at the same time we convince governments that actually it is possible within a business context to actually change legislation for everybody else. They won't change until we've proven it in business. They won't limit business. So actually if we can prove it to both ends, um, consumers and, and government, I think we, we've got, the, we've got the, the, the power within business to change very, very quickly. And, and Henry, your, your thoughts on, on the matter, like there's, there's a, a lot of aspects of it, everyone's aware of it ever since kind of Blue Planet um, yes. to, to air. And there's, there's messages from consumers telling retailers to, to stop serving plastic. There's messages from retailers saying, we'll, we'll do it, but this isn't the whole issue. You know, um, there's, there's issues down the supply chain, there's issues with infrastructure. So, so where do you see the, the key um, solution line? Yeah, I think it's really exciting times, isn't it? You mentioned Blue Planet, it was almost a tipping point and a lot of people weren't that interested not that long ago in plastic pollution and we seem to have a, a critical mass of thought and the Chinese ban on saying, no, we don't want your rubbish any longer. Um, it's public awareness. I think people are suddenly aware of how much plastic they are bringing home in their, in their supermarket trolleys. And I think, a little like Adam, we believe the solutions are viable, commercially scalable, and they have to be. They have to work for, for industry. We are working with um, supermarkets and really pushing for plastic-free alternatives, but with a big push from consumers because I think we are unaware of how powerful we are. I think the 25-year timelines are way out we can bring them right back okay. um, we launched a plastic free aisle in, in Amsterdam those plastic free alternatives some of them very familiar aluminium pulp glass some new really exciting new generation of packaging materials they are available now and we we really need to accelerate that change and for anyone who knows about ocean pollution it, it really is we are at a, a critical point so I think it's it's time to to go now. We, we can't wait and talk any longer. So we are very much about solutions, acting now, massive consumer push. Legislation I think is a game changer and there was news recently about a, a change to the PRN system. I think that will be really important. It sort of it creates a level playing field for supermarkets. But I think there's there's work to be done before that with with champions like Iceland who are, yeah, who are throwing down the gauntlet very, very beautifully. Yeah, yes. and it's, it's, it's great to see um, retailers really coming on board and, and embracing yes. this. Um, but I suppose on a, on a personal level, plastics has been, uh, it's not an issue that has been all of a sudden Blue Planet aired and oh, there's this plastic problem. It's, it's, been, it's been an inherent um, problem of a systematic linear 
um, take, make, dispose system. Um, but on a, on a personal level, I'd be interested to see where both of you kind of picked up your your passion to, to combat plastics pollution, specifically, I suppose, um, in regards to ocean plastics. Adam, um, obviously, um, Surf Dome is, is Europe's kind of largest um, action sport retailer, so I'm guessing you have quite a kind of uh, a visual um, response to plastics. You say. Yeah, absolutely, and it's it's for for me personally, and and, and for a lot of our customers. We, it, and, and it's for everybody, you know, whenever we do the thing that we're passionate about or we go to escape, whether that be the golf course, the football pitch, whatever, if you arrive and, 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 and you get there and it's your escape point and, and you've forgotten about everything else and you're concentrating on what you love to do, and actually you turn up and you find that it's littered with rubbish, it's, it's, it's not great, you know, and, and we're experiencing that on the very front line day in, day out. And, and, and there may be a storm and it may be greater or worse. Um, I'll tell a little bit of uh, a quick story about my mum. She, she grew up in the southwest and she grew up on the beach of the southwest. She moves away um, and came back to visit me and she spent the entire day on the beach picking up tiny little bits of plastic. And I was like, Mum, what are you doing? And she's like, oh, there seems to be a bit of a spill here a little bit. And she, I said, Mum, look along the beach. And she hadn't been on the beach for 10, 10 years in the southwest. And she was like, wow, what's happened here? And I'm like, Mum, this is the reality now. There aren't children born today that are going to know beaches not covered in plastic. There needs to be change and there's a lack of urgency and, and exactly like you said, pushing those dates way out in the distance, I'm afraid it's not good enough. Um, we need to take action in the next quarter and we need to take it now because we are at a tipping point, exactly yeah. as you yeah. said. And, and yeah, and Henry, um, Plastic Planet as an organisation um, was one I became aware of recently right yeah. um so i'm i'm, I'm less in tune of what you were doing before this became the big topic of i suppose 2018 late 2017 so, so where did where did your kind of passion for this subject arise from well the plastic planet was um launched after the screening of if you've heard of plastic ocean yes yeah which was a incredible documentary eight years to make self-funded 22 locations five guys and it's and it's a film that if you see it, you really have to give people something to take home with. It's, it's hard hitting and you, you know, slump shoulders. So you want to give some sense of empowerment. You're part of the solution, yeah. not part of the problem. And the co-founders of A Plastic Planet were printing off leaflets which said refuse, recycle, reuse. And they suddenly looked at them and went, you can't, when you go to the supermarket, you can't reuse that flimsy packaging. You can't refuse it. Everything is wrapped up in it. And our recycling rates are yeah, not good. 9% yeah. of the plastic mm -hmm. ever produced has been recycled. And so they ripped up the flyers and launched a plastic planet. So I think it's, it's really about choice. You can buy almost everything these days. But if you want to shop responsibly, it's extremely difficult. Mm -hmm. You open your fridge and it is just a sea of, it's, it's very hard. You can almost go around some of the supermarkets and go, what can I buy that's not in plastic? And you'll probably come out with some bananas. Yeah. So it's, um, I think that's the drive behind a plastic planet, very solutions based. Um, yes. And and the drive is incredibly important, as you both mentioned, the, the government framework is it's less policy, more, more ambition in, in that sense. There's no concrete stuff. It's just a, a vow to eliminate all kind of single use. Plastic, which um, which is yeah interesting in its own right, but uh, you met you both mentioned the need for this to become an urgent matter and it to be more tackled more quickly, um, and we've seen the government they'll launch a consultation on kind of DRS schemes, but we have people like Iceland, like you mentioned, and Co-op already willing to trial that. So the business appetite seems much more ambitious than, than policy at the moment. But but what can businesses do together, working with their suppliers and I suppose cross sector? and with the waste uh, industry as well. It's that big collaboration question. What, yeah. what can collaboration do to, to unlock and accelerate this progress? Uh, perhaps Henry, you'd like to start that one. Yeah, I, I, mean, I think interesting that you mentioned waste. It, it comes up very fast. You start with plastic packaging, mm. you rapidly move into, you're suddenly at composting conferences, mm. food waste, waste management systems. And I think what we're doing right now is we're talking in silos. And it would be very nice if we started talking about all of those things together. Yeah. We're not even talking about our own human health right now. What does packing and storing and cooking our food in plastic do? That, that whole discussion hasn't started. We are talking about ocean health. We're not yet talking enough about soil health. Um, 
food waste is intimately linked with those two. Mm -hmm. And then our waste collection system is extremely fragmented. You can have adjacent streets with different colored bins. Some collect food, some don't collect food. So we're incinerating, which is a crime, yeah. a lot of food which could be treated and become high quality compost and go back to our, to our fields. So mainland in Europe is, is a very different story when you visit. We were the snails, I think we're catching up fast. We're very vocal right now, the United Kingdom. So I think we're, we're catching up, but I, I think a more holistic conversation would be very useful. And I think waste collection is key, okay. absolutely key. And, and Adam, I mean, as, as a business, you must have experience of, of working with your suppliers to, you know, if you can eliminate 1.2 million bottle, plastic bottles from your operation in, in two years, there must be a, a key to that aspect. Yeah, absolutely. And I think you hit the nail on the head. I think there's, with, with, with both of you saying working in silos, and, and there needs to be that communication across the whole um, supply chain. Um, and, and actually, we, we need to link up the designers with the recyclers at, at both ends, you know, and, 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 and we've found it. There's so many just minor details that you can change in your process. Don't do that, do that. No cost difference. And actually you're doing a massive service to the environment. And you're quite often saving the business money. You're making your business more efficient. And it's, it is literally a communication breakdown. And it's as simple as that. And, and, and we just need to start communicating through. People that have the knowledge just pass that through the whole supply chain. And it's something that we're doing actually um, as a business. We're, we're working with the 680 brands that we deal with. And we've come up with a delivery policy that actually goes through a do's and don'ts of, of best practice of the packaging of the traffic light system. And it's just passing on information. And it, it, it really is that simple in, in a lot of cases. The solutions are there, the excuses aren't. Okay, and I'm, I'm wary obviously that you are about to discuss the plastics problem on, on stage. So I don't want to keep you too long, but um, obviously this is the Mission Possible sofa. And the theme of ED Live 2018 is Mission Possible. We've just launched our big flagship report into how we can help businesses achieve a sustainable future, um, essentially today or as soon as possible. Um, and uh, a big part of ED Live is our pledge wall, which is just off uh, camera to, to my left. And we're basically asking on some businesses uh, and, and any, any delegates to essentially make a pledge um, uh, and one that they believe that they can tackle. Maybe in a year or so we look back and see how that went. So I was wondering if you two would be willing to make a pledge to the pledge wall right now in front of the camera? Sure, ours is a, um, it's an ambitious one and it is to ignite and inspire the world to turn off the plastic tap for food and drink. Okay, yeah, that is a, that is a big one. There's yes. clearly no date attached to that, but no, really good. It's really so, good to have, have um, big, strong, ambitious yes. goals. And, and Adam, yourself? Or? Um, we're probably about a month too early to say some of them. Okay. Um, but the others that we, we certainly will be doing is, is um, trying to inspire and work with the 680 brands that we deal with to um, just curb their, their plastic addiction and um, yeah, reduce as much as they possibly can. Okay, well, um, both of you, thank you very much for taking time out from, uh, from a busy, busy schedule to, to come chat to me. It's been a pleasure. Thank right. you. Thank you.